Hello there ladies and gentlemen, this is Orphan Last, aka Skylar Madison, and today I'm going to go ahead and teach you guys how to draw inside of Affinity Designer. This is a highly requested video, and so that's what I'm going to be working on. But uh, there is a video on YouTube right now, it's about three hours long, so this is what you would need to watch. It's called the Affinity Designer Quick Start, and a card will be supplied in the upper right corner of the screen right now if you don't know anything about affinity designer you need to watch this video have a basic knowledge of what affinity designer can do now when you're presented with all that affinity designer can do it's not always obvious exactly what you're going to be able to do with all of these tools and features and what the best workflow for all of this is going to be and so that's what we're going to be talking about but one thing that I see a lot of people do with affinity designer is they'll make a shape they'll give it a stroke and you know I'll just make this way obvious and such so they give it a stroke and then what they do is they give it a fill and you know they once you have like a million different objects just like this where the stroke and the fill are all linked together it becomes impossible to be able to select anything that you actually want to select so you have to find some way to keep everything organized inside of your layers panel so I don't like doing this I don't like having my strokes and my fills linked together that's just something that really irritates me with uh, the workflow so I make sure that my strokes and my fills are separate objects and I'll get into that in just a little bit okay so the first thing that we need to recognize here is down here at the layers panel we have add layer and we have add pixel layer so the first things that we're going to be focusing on right now is creating the sketch and whenever I sketch I go into the pixel persona okay and then I create a pixel layer right there and then I go ahead and draw a sketch now I'm going to have a brief moment of just doing a speed paint I have a reference image that I'm going to be working with and so this is this is my reference right here and so here's the speed paint okay so now I have kind of a basic sketch here and uh, sometimes I uh, do things a little bit more formally, but uh, this is this is good enough. I'm, the sketch just looks pretty good. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the opacity and then create another raster layer because I want to clean this up and work out as many problems with this sketch as humanly possible before I try to ink it with vectors. So let's go ahead and get that done. Okay, now that I've gone ahead and refined the sketch quite a bit, it's time for me to actually do some nice finishing touches with the vectors. So, in order for me to do that, I need to go back into the draw persona, okay? And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to pull out the brush tool, turn on pressure sensitivity on the controller, and then I'm going to go into brushes, and in the assorted section, I'm going to click on a brush that basically looks like pressure sensitivity is activated for that brush because it just makes some nice looking lines. Now, if you notice, if I just start drawing, every single line winds up being a, a separate object inside of the layers panel. And that could be a nightmare to work with. But once I create a new layer, an actual layer that's not a raster or a pixel layer, but a layer I can start drawing and each one of these shapes if I go ahead and open up the layer it you can see it operates kinda like a group and each one of those objects is stored inside of that layer and that's a heck of a lot easier to manage and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete those layers or objects and I'm going to call this wor line work and so now I'm going to get rid of my initial sketch and I'm going to get this refined sketch and I'm going to lower the opacity quite significantly and now I'm going to work with my line work layer and I'm just going to just start drawing now one thing that I do when I'm doing this is uh, I oftentimes wind up finding myself in a situation where I need to mess with the uh, pressure 
sensitivity. Like my brush strokes, they're good, but they need to be adjusted or something like that. The line thickness isn't isn't the way that I want it to be. And so if I go into the stroke menu uh, right here and mess with this, you can actually, at the pressure, I can actually change the pressure sensitivity. I can also just get rid of all of these if I wanted to, and I can have some custom saved profiles for sensitivity. So I can have it do something like that, and I can save it, and I can do the direct opposite and save it, so that if I'm not happy with this one, I could just switch to the other one. Uh, or I might just do something like that. That looks pretty good. Save it. Or I might just go to that and then save it. Okay? And uh, so I can just quickly, if, if there's just thousands of little nodes here, I can quickly look at some of my presets and see what do I like? What, what looks best? And if I find that it just needs a little bit of adjusting or whatever, then maybe I might just do that. Um, so now I'm going to continue with a speed painting once again. So at this point some people might actually be under a misconception because the speed paint is so fast. I made this speed paint go at uh, 100 times speed primarily to save you guys time. It may look like I'm using the pen tool but I'm not. I'm just using the brush tool and the node tool. And that's it. Okay, so here's something that I find interesting right here. Okay, <clears throat> if I select this line and I click right here and click on this break curve, it'll break it. But you need to be careful because sometimes this influences both lines to share the same pressure sensitivity curve. And so sometimes you might have to adjust this, uh, this line to be just right. Um, because ultimately this line that uh, is going through here I'm getting rid of so yeah see you you saw me just get rid of it uh, but I don't need to adjust the curve at all uh, so like this is really helpful uh, just you know you, you get the node tool and you're able to cl uh, click and uh, create a new node and then just grab any excess and just erase it without having to influence the entire curve. That's something that I find really helpful. So now let's have the uh, speed paint continue just a little bit more. Okay, so we have this all sketched out now. So the next step is to start coloring it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my sketch layer here and we can see the line work. Now it might be a little bit unnerving to see your line work without any context, but when you color it, it it'll look a lot better. Now, the first step in coloring it is laying down your flats, okay? So I'm gonna create a new layer, a vector layer, by the way, put it underneath my line work, make sure that it doesn't stagger like this. The blue line that's going across the layers panel, make sure it doesn't stagger like this. Put your mouse right underneath the actual thumbnail of the image and uh, make sure that the line goes all the way across like this, okay? Otherwise what you're doing is you're parenting, you're making this the parent of this layer, okay? You're making the line work the parent of this layer. Let me show you, okay? so. Basically what I did is I just threw it right into that layer and I, I don't want to do that. Okay, let me go ahead and collapse the, the line work layer. Okay, so we want it underneath there. I'm going to double click it and call it color. And at this point, I'm it's all with the pen tool. Okay, and so what I'm able to do is I'm able to just start clicking away and I'm not really trying to be precise with any of this. Uh, it's all the first thing that you do with all of this is you just lay it down as quick as you can I'm gonna look at the color. Okay, so there is no stroke and there is no fill So I need to get a fill color for his skin tone and okay, that looks about good So now I press a in order to pull out the node tool and at this point what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to match up my nodes with my line work and just really quickly adjust these 
here. And just like I said earlier, you can create new nodes just by clicking on the line and uh, really quickly make adjustments. Now, at this point, we're not trying to focus on super high detail stuff. We're just trying to focus on laying down uh, the basic colors. And sometimes in this process, I find that I need to adjust a few of my lines here and there. And that's fine. You're, you can go ahead and do that. And uh, you know, I'm not interested with my line work. I'm not interested in making it all just one big line going all the way through the entire thing. That's just too much work. Whenever you join lines together, let me show you. Whenever you join a line together with another line, uh, what happens is this. Okay, so I select both of these lines and I select that node and I select that node. And then there's this join curves. What happens is if you, if you noticed, let me... Let me change the color of this back to black here. Okay, so look look at how the line thickness changes every time that I, I join those two together. I'm just uh, going to uh, join right there. See, see how the line just ever so slightly gets adjusted? Well, sometimes if, if your line thickness on one line is, is uh, one point and another line is like five points, you can get all sorts of weird results whenever you join these lines together. And it's kind of unpredictable as to what point uh, thickness your line width is going to be when you join them. So I'm not interested in, in trying to join all of my lines together with my line work. Okay, so let me go back to the color layer and uh, pull out the node tool and just keep on trucking with it. Now, this may seem like it's the long route, because why would you want to create all of these separate objects for your fills? This may seem like an extra step that's not needed. The reason is because it's easier to select your colors when they're all their own object all by themselves. Okay, so we have a problem here. So we have this empty space here where it should be red. I mean, it's it's not really empty, it's blue space. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna create a shape that will fit right here. And I'm gonna color it yellow because it's distinct. I can definitely see it. And I'm going to give it a shape that fits within this region really well. Awesome. Okay, so now that I've got that shape, I make sure that the yellow thingamabob that I just created is above the blue layer, the blue ribbon color. Okay, and so I select both of these, and I select subtract up here. And you can see I got rid of it. And so I'm gonna do that once again. All right, once again, I can see the yellow thingamajig that I just created is above my blue ribbon color, and I subtract. All right, so now that I have that, it's now time to add shadows and highlights, okay? So this is, this is what it's all about with the shadows and highlights. Uh, basically, you select a color that you've already laid down, whether or not it's with the move tool or with the node tool. Either way, it doesn't matter. Once you select the color, you select this Insert Inside the Selection button. Okay, and I like to use the Pen tool. And uh, this may take a little bit of a learning curve, but basically what you do is, if, if you don't know how to use the Pen tool, this is not the video that teaches you how to use the Pen tool. In fact, I'm not planning on teaching how to use the Pen tool ever. There's no real point because uh, it's pretty standard with art programs, but basically what I, I do is I, I kind of lay down uh, a little bit of a, a foundation, and I, I sometimes look at my reference in order to see what's going on with it versus what's going on with my character, because the lighting inside of my reference is sometimes pretty valid. And uh, so I'm just going to do something like that. And I don't even have to worry about coloring inside the lines. I can select the skin tone 
and then I can just darken it and desaturate it or I can lighten it or do whatever I want with it and uh, so that seems to work out pretty well and I can press Y on the keyboard in order to get the transparency tool and I can I can just kind of fade it out so that it's not as pronounced of a color now that I've already done that I can I can just keep on going without having to worry too much and now that I've got that established I, I don't have to keep clicking on this insert and side selection button I could just keep on working but uh, I, I'm looking at this and I, I'm kind of not liking uh, just how dark this is so I'm going to lighten it up a bit that looks good I'm seeing different things on my reference image uh, to where I'm I'm just trying to copy what's there to some extent okay what I'm not liking about this little thing is that it's got all these sharp edges so I'm gonna get the Gaussian blur and just kind of blur it a little bit and that seems to be working in fact I think I might do that with this one as well just kind of blur it so that it doesn't have such obnoxious edges and now let's look at the layers panel really quick here okay so if I select my skin tone really quick here and scroll down okay we can see that's where my skin tone is alright now if I click on this down arrow we can find every single shape that I've drawn okay so you don't necessarily need to use this insert inside selection but if I have an opportunity to not have to look at my layers panel I'm gonna take every opportunity I can so that I don't have to be messing around with all the thousands and thousands of different shapes that are inside of my image okay now the transparency tool it's a good way to have a gradiented opacity gradient the thing is is if you're having difficulty with your gradients try to combine an actual gradient with the gradient tool it's actually the most versatile gradient tool I've ever used inside of any piece of software ever use that in combination with the transparency tool that really helps out but I didn't need that for this image I have a, a buddy of mine that says that he wishes that you could actually curve the gradient and such like that and if you use some sort of combination between the gradient tool and the transparency tool and just use them in concert with one another you know what you can have something that almost looks like that this is uh, something where affinity designer is a little bit lacking whereas Adobe Illustrator you know they have the gradient mesh and that's really cool and all but you don't necessarily need it so this is what I wound up using the image that I drew here for instead of a, a thumbnail nail and I think it turned out pretty well anyways guys that pretty much concludes it for this video if you guys enjoyed it please feel free to like share and subscribe and if you guys would like to get more notifications from me feel free to click on the bell or go ahead and follow me on Twitter there's a link in the video description below and if you guys would like to see any more of my content feel free to click on anything appearing on the screen right now thank you very much for your time